Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Jonna Talone Sullivan, and thank you for joining us today on Totus Tuus Evangelization Network. I am your host today, and uh, we are once again honored to have uh, John and Carol Leary with us. Last time uh, they were with us was back in August of 2022. So a lot has happened since then. So we want to keep tabs on them and um, learn more what our Lord and our Lady is telling them and instructing them to uh, uh, promote uh, their messages of what our lifestyle should be and changes that need to be made uh, for this great glorious kingdom of God that is, is coming. And um, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, hi, Carol. Here hi, John. Pleasure yeah. to be back. Happy, happy New happy Year. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, need a, we need a happy New Year. <laughs> so nice to see you. Uh, let's start with our, um, we usually start with a Hail Mary and asking the Holy Spirit to guide us and um, protect us from all evil. Name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. Thanks the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed are thou among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, God pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. And we seek refuge in the Immaculate Heart of Mary and protection underneath the patronage of St. Joseph. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, happy feast day yesterday for St. Joseph. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, we love St. Joseph, especially our contractor here. <laughs> yeah, he's my... He is my go-to. He is mine uh, too as well. Okay. Well, it's been a while and mm -hmm. you guys obviously don't look like you ever change. You get <laughs> younger or you just hit the age where youth yeah. is forever with you. Uh, but there are a lot of people maybe hearing us this time that hasn't heard back before when we we met last time. So <clears throat> maybe this is their first time with us. And um, if you could just be so kind as to give us a brief background of how your ministry started, we'll, we'll start there. Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll give a little, little bit, you know, just to say we've been married 58 years. We have three daughters and eight grandchildren and six great grandchildren. And uh, so we're delighted the family's growing. But, uh, and John has gone to daily mass since he was 17 and myself, probably since my early twenties. And uh, we considered ourselves, you know, just active in our parish, you know, electors, the liturgy committee in charge of the church cleaners and everything. So in, uh, in 1986, Seven, we had our, our little son passed away and John in his kind of grief took up the computer and it became a really a terrible addiction. And in 1993, we went back again to Medjugorje and it was there that we were, you know, in the adoration room praying and the um, blessed, no, it was the Lord that came to John first. And he said, you know, you're wasting all your time for yourself and not for me. Yeah. So that's a lesson for all of us. You know, yeah. how much time do we give the Lord compared to our own desires? I see that in your judgment. So uh, at any rate, the first thing he told him is, you know, get off this computer addiction. And when we came home and he was off, I said, I know that was the Lord because miracles. He, <laughs> because in 10 years of my grumbling, it didn't make much difference. <laughs> so then uh, nobody told him to continue daily mass like he'd been doing. Uh, monthly confession, which we've been doing, three rosary. increased the rosary from one to three. We're doing now four. Four, because our lady, you know, our lady uh, on the feast of the Immaculate yes. Conception requested this fourth rosary. Our prayer group and our daily prayers for the conversion of our families. So that to me is kind of another sign how close things are are mm -hmm. coming. And then the last one, which was kind of a real tough one, he wanted us to go to adoration every night. Mm -hmm. You know, we went once a month tonight, nocturnal adoration, but this was a big leap. So fortunately, a, a chapel had just opened about seven minutes away from us, so we had no excuse. So basically, uh, that was the beginning. Uh, it was April 93, May 93. The Lord came a second time, said, would you give me your will for a special mission? Which I did without um, asking, and not knowing what I was going to get into. <laughs> I know. Probably the last thing you would have chosen is to go out speaking. Yeah. 
You have to be careful when you sign it on the dotted, <laughs> the dotted line, there. line. Yeah, the blind check. <laughs> and then, uh, then in April, or no, no, it was July 21st, 93, we went to Toronto to see Maria Spranza that mm -hmm. night. We came home like 1.30 in the morning and the bedroom smelled of roses. So I mm -hmm. thought it was because we just saw Maria. Mm -hmm. But that's when it really mm -hmm. began as he got in bed. It was the big black letters on the newspaper headline, mm -hmm. disaster. And that's the very first things he saw were the, like the big California earthquake, mm. the New Madrid earthquake. It was a spoon feeding, like yeah. a baby in the beginning. Mm. So, mm. so that's pretty much, we got a spiritual director right a couple of weeks later. And it's yeah. every day. I had three, four, three died. And I'm on the last one. Now he's younger <laughs> than me. So this one should, I should outlast this one. We hope so. Yeah. But, but the bottom line, uh, it's gone on all these years, two messages a day pretty much after holy communion and at night at adoration yeah okay so well i i i i think i believe that a lot of your messages and what a lot of the um things that we're seeing overall in christianity today and the events of the world are moving quickly Absolutely. and i uh would my gut feeling is we're going to be living through this um yes. So why don't you, why don't we dive right on in and go ahead and give us a little overview of the okay. order, the order okay. of the events uh, that will happen. This is probably what I give at every talk I give. <laughs> oh, a then you overview. have it memorized. <laughs> no, almost. I use you this as for a guide. Okay, go ahead. Uh, he talks about the warning first. It's a life review or a mini judgment. And he talks about not taking the mark of the beast and to worship, not worship the Antichrist. That's the first part of the warning. The second part is, uh, it talks about a six weeks of conversion time after the warning, which is why it's so important to get our family members at that time to be believers, because if they're not believers, they won't be allowed into the refuge. So we need to get them to be believers. That's the six weeks of conversion. And during that time, Brother Michelle and myself both had messages that there won't be any evil during that time, which is a good thing that if you're trying to get people to believe. So that will be a blessing. At the end of this time of the conversion, he talks about getting rid of our televisions, our cell phones, you're going to love us, <laughs> all the things connected to the internet. So the Antichrist doesn't control you. If he, if you look at his eyes, he could control you to get, get you to worship him. That's why we have to get rid of that stuff. So, and I got a lot of nice new stuff to the road out of the house it'll be painful yes <laughs> and our cell phones you know yeah i know that i don't have one but carol's gonna miss it um okay after that conversion you're gonna start getting closer to the time of the antichrist coming into power so you're gonna be seeing a world famine which could be caused by all sorts of ways one of the worst problems you can have with a world famine is to lose our electricity because some of the people that talk about uh you know, if we get a grid failure for a long time, it, we could be 90% of the people could die just from not having food. So another thing he talks about all the time is keep having three months of food pre, uh, in your home for each member. And that's for, you know, if you, some place we've just been out to California, there was all kinds of floods yeah, there. We were in the flood. And in different areas we're seeing like Buffalo, they had like 130 inches of snow so you don't know if you're going to get snowed in or rained in or floods or whatever so it's good to have that extra food uh another thing he talks about is there'll be a division of church which we're going to talk about a little later uh, between the systematic church and the faithful remnant i'm just going to gloss over that because we're going to talk about it later also he talks about a martial law time this will be uh, <laughs> i have to say it bankruptcy i mean does that sound familiar what's going on now Mm -hmm. So you're going to see a bankruptcy, a crash of the dollar, and a, a digital dollar coming on. That, that's a thing we'll talk about mm -hmm. also. And he talk, he's he been talking about pandemic virus for ages. And we not only had the COVID virus, but he's talking about a, a Black Plague virus coming next. Uh, also, we've been seeing terrorist attacks right along. So that's going to be a combination. So those kind of things could trigger a martial law. One of the other things he talks about after this digital dollar, we'll talk about later, um, is the chip in the body or the mark of the beast. And he says not to take the mark of the beast, uh, no matter what condition. And part of the problem with that is uh, if you do take the mark of the beast and worship the Antichrist, you'll be sending yourself to hell, basically. So you have to avoid that. 
at, at a certain point, then the Antichrist, which he's already, already we heard about the Antichrist being crowned in Egypt, just in, in, one, of recent, in one of the recent meetings by the, the they want to say the Luciferian was, priest. Yeah, Luciferian priest. You know, say something like that. I think that happened during the summit. Yes. That just happened. Yes. And I kind of wonder if it happened on election day because that was the fourth blood moon. And uh, those people are very much into mm -hmm. things like that. Right. So um, I'm, who, I'm really, who, who crowned him? The Luciferian priests. Yeah, Luciferian. that's what I had. I had messages about that exactly. Way back in 2007, the Lord talked about it. Yeah. And then we read on Steve Quayle, that's exactly what just happened. I know. So, so that sounds to me, says to me that things are getting really close. close yes. Do people and, know who this guy is? Yeah. Um, or is he in hiding? Is there a name? Or yeah, I did have Lord Maitreya, and just be careful with that. Don't look it up because it can can bring evil into your house. But he said when he comes to power, he's going to use a different name, so yeah, uh -huh. it probably isn't going to matter that people right. know the name is going to be different. So you have a certain point at which the Antichrist will then come into power, and the way he comes into power is he talks. Our Lord talks about. We're going to be forced, I mean, when Biden takes us down, we're going to be forced into the American North, North American Union, and that's with Mexico, Canada, and ourselves, and that's that's how he's going to get this power. So all the one world people, the Masons and all those type of one world people are going to control all the different continents with these unions, and then all the unions are given over to the Antichrist and the European Union, and that's when he's going to take over. He'll declare himself. Before that happens, of course, we're going to be in called to, to come to the refuge before that, so we're protected. Okay. Isn't he supposed to be looking like a good guy? Uh -huh. uh, he'll try, try, to... try and claim to be a man of, of peace, peace, maybe mm -hmm. even to satisfy this Russian war. Yeah, bring knows? peace to the, the war. That, yeah. that is the way he talks, you're right. But he, he's obviously a man of lies, as all anything to do with demons are lies. So, okay, you have this time of the end of Christ, which in the Bible talks about less than three and a half years. It's less because of the, for the sake of the elect. Then at, after this end of the tribulation time, our Lord is going to bring what is called a comet of chastisement upon the people. And the way this happens, I'll just, you want to give some other examples, Carol? This is all about separating the good people from the evil people. That's what this right. is about. So like at the time of Noah, you know, the Lord took Noah and the animals and his family into the ark because they were the, the good people yes. before he destroyed the evil. Right. Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, even the angel led Lot and his family out right. and before, just, uh, before, before he, he destroyed it. And what I was thinking about this the other day, you know, uh, Lot told them not to look back. That's right. And then his wife turned to the pillar of salt. That's right. And, you know, I was thinking about the three days of darkness and how the Lord says, cover your windows. He said to have, have black, black, black um, plastic bags, plastic bags to put over your windows so you don't, tarps, so you at, don't look at yes. you don't look at the evil going because on. Because he doesn't want us to see the, the evil then. I mean, either. The, the way the Lord is going to take care time. of the evil people. Yeah. So, and then we had, you know, the, uh, the exodus, you know, the blood on the doorpost, the angel of death passed over those houses, mm -hmm. you know, and even, uh, a, John even mentioned um, with uh, Elijah in the cave, you know, he was These are places people were hiding. Mm -hmm. And when uh, Joseph took Mary and child and flee in the night. We to went Egypt. to the place where they were in Egypt. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, it was flooded with water there yeah, too. I know it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, the, uh, but the important thing is uh, the Lord always takes care of his faithful right. self. So he's going to bring the faithful to I mean, there will be martyrs, obviously. People will be killed before they can get to the refuge. Or if but they don't leave on The time. idea of the refuge is to bring the people there so they can be protected by the angels that are going to be at the refuge. That's that part. And so after that happens, after the comet comes, it'll kill a lot of the other people because we're going to be in the refuge and the angels will be shielding the refuge with a uh, invisible shield, number one, but number two, a physical shield that will keep prevent any bombs or anything from harming us or any comets from harming us so we'll be protected so after all the evil people are cleansed from the earth with the comet then he's going to bring about um he's going to take us and put us up in the air for a bit and then renew the face of the earth literally 
Like we say the prayer of the right. Holy Spirit, come and renew and the face be like, of the earth. On the earth, it's going to be like a Garden of Eden all over. And so then he's going to bring us down into that time, and it's going to be the era of peace. That's what he's given me. Yeah, remember Our Lady at Fatima promised that in the end, her heart will triumph in the right. era of peace given to the world. So uh, this is really exciting, you know, and so many people forgot. You'll be young Fatima. again, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that part. Yeah, look, maybe even have more children, he said. Yeah. You'll have light <laughs> all the time. You'll have food. You won't even have to grow it. You'll have food. I mean, it's going to be a beautiful place. And, and you'll have this uh, the tree of life that you'll eat from. And just like in Adam and Eve in the garden, when they had that tree of life, as long as they ate from that, they lived a long time. But during this era of peace, there'll be many trees of life. So we'll be living a long time as well. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> Well, you know what? Uh, I was, and that's not the end of the world. That's just the end of the no. era. There's no, the end of the, the, end of the era. Said... Peace. Everyone has to die. I should finish it up. And at the year, uh, everyone has to die, but you'll be living a long time. But we'll be with no evil during that time. Mm -hmm. So you'll be uh, as we die. By the time we die during that time, you're going to be almost like a saint. So you're going to go like mm -hmm. a saint into heaven from the era of peace. Well, our purgatory is going to be the life yeah, the purgatory the is living during the tribulation time. Yeah, and and then the, uh, then the Lord release uh, Satan's release again, and then there's like you said the yeah. the, end, the end time. Yes, time. Yes. Yes, I, I the only explanation I have, you know, you wonder why after the Satan's chained, why would he be unleashed again? And it's not the Antichrist. This is the this is but, Satan. I think it's to probably test the people that were born during the era of peace that were never tested. Mm -hmm. See, all of us would be already tested mm -hmm. because we endured the tribulation. But these people born then would, would not have experienced mm -hmm. any testing because everything would have been perfect. Just like mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, you know, they had their test and they flunked out. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were deceived by the demon. Right. By Satan. So that just, you know, it's not a theological uh anything but it's my just my my personal opinion <laughs> for what it's worth not much but anyway so uh, now let me get this so we have the warning right and um then um conversion time and then you have that six weeks conversion before i don't know then that miracle happened consistent with other like Aramindal or other places or the sign. I don't want to, we don't know where that fits in. Well, um, I've had so, all along. What kind of a guess would be. Mother Michelle has this also. Yeah, I think that the miracle. And I hope he comes on the show because this would yeah, be a good miracle. question. Can't promise you that. <laughs> well, well, he talked. We'll see him next month. We'll try. Yes. But um, my guess is that by the description of the miracle, it would be the crucifix or the crosses in the sky over all the yeah. places of refuge. The luminous cross, he calls As it. As it said, you'll look upon it, you'll be healed. That's at the refuge. That uh, you won't be able to destroy it. You'll mm -hmm. see it. It'll, you know, and. Um, It'll be at every refuge, not just in one place and overseas. It wouldn't be just Garbadal. It would be all well, the Yeah, there's a permanent refuge. sign too. Yes, and yes, so. Yeah, it Kind of, yeah. It could be permanent through the tri whole tribulation, tribulation yes. mm -hmm. you know, till the new era. And when it, you look on it, what I had, when you look on the luminous cross, you're going to be healed of all your, anything wrong with you. So that, that's a nice thing. So that kind of explains what would happen. They said at Garbandau. In the know, nine pines and the pine yeah, trees, right. what the miracle we there is once. going to be. We were there once. So, you know, there's, the Lord kind of tells you what you need to know when you need to know it. Mm -hmm. to, uh, St. Joseph came yesterday and talked oh, a little wow. more about our construction <laughs> in our backyard. That's <laughs> and, another matter. <laughs> and, he, and he says, he says, you know, basically, you know, the Lord's going to give us more information as time goes on. He doesn't right. overwhelm us all at once. No, little by little. <laughs> so, okay. So, so let me, I just want to get this right. So during the six weeks, there's not going to be any evil for around those six weeks That's until we I get had prepared. Had, yes. For, uh, to go to the uh, refugees right. and at that time uh, or at the end of that six week is when we have to get rid yes. of computers cell phones right. yes. um, and uh, all of the tvs uh, and uh, i guess like you said we'll have an angel lead whoever's yes. to be when, led when to a refuge time, he will give us a luminous, the right place give us an interlocution when it's time to come to the refuge and if you don't know where it is, he will have your guardian angel 
guide you with a flame to the nearest refuge. Okay. And um, I, I'm just rephrasing it. I mean, just going back over it. Uh, then there, after the six weeks, when you're in the refuge, uh, that's when there's going to be this world famine, um, yes. and we could lose electricity that's and the grid problem. failure, and you we really need to have supplies of food and and yeah. water. Uh, we don't you know if that's going to gonna store be eventually. Or be we don't. Empty shows. Uh huh. Well, we don't know if that's going to be winter months. Um, I know Garamandal says April. Conchita said April, May, June. I mean, we don't know, um, I guess, when that happens, but we'll obviously f- go with the flow with whatever <laughs> the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord says, was I was that time for the but, morning. But the Lord says, pray that you don't have to flee in the winter, too. That's right. Yeah. You know? So, um, and then uh, we see a division of church and remnants where you're going to talk about martial yeah. law again. Uh, and uh, plagues uh, or black plague or bankruptcy the digital currency which is here and uh, then now that is part of after the six weeks right yeah that's all after the six weeks and then probably uh, we'll be going to the refuge pretty soon by that time yeah well then, we don't know about the digital money might come into play before. yeah that, that's coming in now before. <laughs> yeah, that's what I yeah, mean, yeah coming in pretty soon yes yeah when he, he always says when your lives are in danger that's when we so i going, think sure. some of these things we have to keep a little flexibility but one of the things he emphasized when i mentioned about the chip in the body and uh or the um mark of the beast uh in that i mean that that's really <laughs> That, that is a special one because if you really take it and worship the Antichrist, he's saying you're going to be condemned. For that. I mean, it's right in chapter 13, I think, in mm-hmm. the book of Revelation. That's pretty important. Mm-hmm. So we're not to take that mark of the beast, even if it means uh, you don't have food or anything because you'll be going to the refuge to get the food. So not to worry mm-hmm. you know, or a job or anything like that. You, so mm-hmm. they're going to use, just like they use the, um, the COVID virus, the demanded that you'd had to take the shot in right, order to get right. uh, your job or, or to go to school in order to have um, work as a health person up. All that stuff was mandated. So it's the same way. This mark of the beast or the chip in the body is going to be mandated or you don't have a job or you don't have this, you don't have that. Is this so, is supposedly the, before the miracle then? Um, Probably. A miracle will be, for the, as far as I'm concerned, I, I didn't have a message per se, about the miracle. The only thing I had was about the luminous crosses that would be at the refuges. Mm-hmm. That's what I had. So when we come to the refuge, that will be the miracle, mm-hmm. if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. That's what I had. What, what or authentic uh, sites also would have uh, oh, yeah. and cross place, or some, something the in the air. Called, the places he called about refuges would be <clears> places <throat> of Our Lady's apparition, places of holy ground have been consecrated, uh, places shrines. of shrines, monasteries uh places that have adored the blessed sacrament for many years those are the kinds of places we'd Plus, be taking and then the personal homes yeah mm-hmm. homes. If, if you're made a refuge yeah. mm-hmm. and i might just uh, add there just in the past couple months there's been a huge increase of refuges being started mm-hmm. so this that we've kind noticed. of says to me that uh the holy spirit is touching these people because right. the time is so short Mm-hmm. You know, and these people are all gone ho they're getting know, ready very quickly one of the messages he gave me was that at, at, toward the end this time uh, many of the people that get messages or visions are going to be talking more about refuges mm-hmm. yes. okay and then a three and then there is a three and a half tribulation period right. of time three and a half years right that's Last not day. a chastisement that's that's a the that's, tribulation that's a tribulation that would be um Basically, the the Antichrist and the evil people trying to kill people or control control us, for sure. Okay. And then there becomes the chastisement that many have talked about. That's the end of the tribulation, right. Fire from the sky. Yeah. Um, And that separates the good and the bad, the visible shield. Right. 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 And then in the end, then there's a time where we're lifted up. And then yep. we're brought back down to the Garden of Eden, where uh, we call it the Air of Peace. The yeah. Air of Peace. Um, that's that's the uh, overview. Yes. Okay. Good overview. Thank you. 
Well, there's a lot to talk about. Let's let's start okay. there. Let's okay. start. Um, let's start with the banks. There are a lot of concern over the stability of the the uh, banks and how the digital right. dollar is going to come right. about. <clears throat> so let's talk how this effect is going to affect right. the world. Right. Hence, we have the central uh, bank digital yeah, currency. They're, yeah, they're, they're going to have that digital dollar coming out pretty soon you're right well i heard july they're going to the use Fed now exactly this they're july use, is a beta test for mit they're going to use this bank failure they've been testing this all in the other banks already for about 12 weeks we know, okay I mean, that was in the news i could read the whole message i mean or just one part of it Carol yeah. likes Carol, Carol likes to be, just re, well, be sure. Read read what's very relevant on yeah. uh, on that digital okay. currency because we can always go back. Uh, okay. As I'll, we cover some of the other I, other I, stuff. I, I like to read the whole thing because Carol okay. likes to read first. This is <laughs> okay. March. This is March seventeenth about the bank failures. Okay. Many of our people are concerned about so many banks that are failing with bankruptcies. Jesus said, "My people." Many people are afraid of losing their money in the banks that are failing. Other investors in the stock market are concerned that stock prices could fall as they did in 2008. If your treasury department tries to bail out the bank losses, you may see even more inflation from the government printing too, much, too many bonds or cash. A combination of high interest rates and inflation could cause more bank failures and a possible recession when jobs are cut to save money. Your Federal Reserve is making hard decision, a hard decision whether to keep raising interest rates, which I think they're going to do it. Many, many banks and businesses were used to, have, used to having uh, cheap money and loans, but now the high cost of loans could ruin a small business. Now, this is the real point. This is all part of a plan to allow the one world people to bring on their digital dollar and control the people's money with threats of shutting down your accounts if you do not comply with their liberal agenda. Be prepared to come to my refuges if you lose your money in the stocks and bonds or if they cancel your bank account. So you can see we're right at the point of coming. Yeah, you recall where Trudeau uh, threatened to shut down or freeze the accounts of, of anybody truckers. helping the truckers during yes. the strike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think he kind of overstepped himself a little bit, I but know. it was good that he did because it gives us a forewarning of what right. their plans are. There's a lot to go on with that, but that's, that's the gist of what he was giving. That's going to probably wake the most people up to lose their money. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest threat people have. And plus, yeah. the dollar is going down. And uh, mm -hmm. Mexico, Canada, a lot of places are, are now uh, not trusting. They're going to the UN um, instead of um, placing uh, faith in the dollar. Um, um, I'm sure China is part of that. And Holy so there's a lot of yeah. things happening with, yeah. well, the thing about that, that it really uh, is amazing is a lot of people don't realize, I have talked actually to people who think, oh, that's a good thing, you know, digital currency, we don't have to worry about. Yeah. You don't realize then what happens, control. they, all our control would be taken. They can remove all of our funds that every control, you know. one day you could have it and the next day. Uh, your social security could be gone. Your Medicare exactly. could be gone if 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 it, if we didn't support what the government wanted. If you were That's anti-government, right. it could be gone. You would have nothing. Yeah, I, don't, I want to say anti-government. It's anti-policies of the government. <laughs> the, well, but they're mostly so liberal sorry. policies. But those are the ones that'll be I in know, charge. I know. But time. that that alone could spiral people if they don't can walk in faith. And trust yeah, they don't in the realize Lord. What's coming. Yeah. So he's mentioned martial law, and I do think that that could, that could really trigger martial here too law. If, when if people's the, money is if really the people are have their threatened. money taken away, is that going to go down very good? If you you saw the French people fighting over their pensions over there in the news, so it's going to be it could be even worse than that. Mm -hmm. All right. It would it could precipitate a martial law if they get a lot of you know Quiet, people right. fighting it. Yeah, um, more, this is why it's also, I'm going to stress this, and I'm sure you'll agree that people are making, and we're going to talk about refugees, and many people yes. are preparing, making preparations and yes. going way out for all of this, but also the spiritual component preparation Absolutely. needs to uh, really have yeah. a focus on it as, as well. Sure. A lot of people who find out if they have no food from us, uh, a city 
uh, will wouldn't take very long for them to invade over to where any place a farm would be uh, yes, no. to. Here's uh, the thing. I just, oh, if I could just mention quickly, uh, I understand the food people would probably be, you know, be scared if they don't have food. The <clears throat> thing the Lord talks about when you come to the refuge, the angel that's of the refuge is going to put a shield around the the refuge place the, right at the border, the perimeter. And so no, no evil people or anybody that doesn't believe in God will not be able to come in there. So when we come there, we will have a shield. It is protection big time, even, even from the atomic bombs, even from the comets. So it's protection like, and we'll be invisible so the people won't be able to see you at the refuge. Mm -hmm. that, that's beautiful and that trust. I was thinking uh, oftentimes uh, people, I've heard this, that gee, if a comet hit, uh, the earth, depending where in the water, if in water and a, a, a tidal wave hit and you want to be yep. so many exactly. feet above ground and stuff. I understand. And, and so uh, I was talking, well, you know, our good friend locally in, in uh, Florida, I won't mention her name. She was like, oh my gosh, what happens if that happens in Florida? Is that shield going to be there is no oh, yeah because yeah. he you saw know what I mean? in the Atlantic Ocean. Bye bye. <laughs> great, great. Unless now, there's okay. a shield over and the just goes over. Right now, if you look around the world and, and want just try to picture this, it's like little white dots where all the refuges are. Uh -huh. And even if there's floods and big things like that, we could be even little islands in the in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to answer you, but well. there'll be protection like you, you don't know. Yeah, yeah this well, is the part well. of trust and prayer that. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, the Lord and, and also throughout the Bible and throughout history, uh, it's not also everything laid out. There is also times and prayers and um, mm -hmm. that we do. We know it's the oh, overall yeah. picture. Just the framework, but not every yeah. detail. Let me have one, one, one more point I want to make on the refuges. At the refuges, our Lord said, we would have perpetual adoration around the clock. Whenever we do our practice runs, we always, we don't have the host, but we pray like, like it's there. So during, at the time of the refuge, you'll have a priest for mass, or you'll have the angels bring you Holy Communion every day during the tribulation. Okay. And so you'll take one of those hosts and you'll put it in a monstrance and you'll be you know, everybody will have hours before that. So that's a very integral part of the refuge because without that belief in God, having him present, his real presence there, um, that is going to be allowing you to have the miracles of multiplication of your food and everything. So that's why when you said spiritual component, that is the component that you're going <laughs> to survive on. Yeah, that, that is key because if you don't have that, that's really a basic. proper. That's why I have to mention the that. The Lord's not thinking the same. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Now, you've mentioned refugees as scriptural. Yes. It, um, so if you want to uh, uh, speak about that, how people should prepare, um, uh, how do you know if you should have your own refuge? You want to talk about the refugees now since we john okay. you were just starting into right, that right yeah you need to move john well, to wait. you need to do a love hug with carol so we can see your face a little more <laughs> there you go okay. there you go okay Perfect. i'm just gonna there read, you go. you, I'll <laughs> read you. you one message on the refugees and let, let me oh okay yeah well, let, enter, enter. let me well, now you're gonna make me think forget what i was gonna say here. okay <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you go ahead and uh Oh, I know I was going to say. Okay, see, it's what happens when it turn 80. Uh, <laughs> you know, people, uh, I'll ask, how do I know if I should do a refuge? Yes. That's, okay. that's kind of a, a real big, big question. Yeah. Uh, so the Lord said, if you discern in prayer that you wish to do a refuge, he'll accommodate your yes to this work. Right. Then you have to do the preparations. And I think when we were just in California, there was a lady. There was a lady just got pre big she property. Had, and she inherited forty acres on the mountain with a house. She's going to make a refuge to with do it. A refuge. So the Lord kind of gave a rundown of what uh, she to. needed to do. So I think reading the wow. whole thing here. That's yeah. great. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read a it. How-to message if you're a beginning <laughs> refuge builder. <laughs> so this was March 11, 2023. It's talking about uh, for beginners, I guess. For those people who are planning a refuge now, initially he asked me to do 40 people. So I'm going to talk from my point of view. 
how he gave it to me. So I'm talking about 40 people, basically. Uh, Jesus said, my people, for those people who are planning a refuge, you first need to discern if you are willing to provide for about 40 people. I mean, you got to think about having 40 people in your house all the time for three and a half years. Well, wow. you know, they have enough. Well, I'm sure it's hard enough having it for over 50 years. Well, what I mean, it's, it's, more, it's more than just a desire to do it. It means a, a commitment that you're going to supply everything. Of course. I'm just teasing. Yeah, I know. You next need to prepare a small. So he starts out with this. You next need to prepare a small altar for adoration. At the time of tribulation, you'll receive a consecrated host from a priest or my angels. You will place the host in a monstrance and the people will sign up for hours of adoration to worship me and they'll be assigned all around the clock. You will need a source of water from a well, a pond or a stream of water. We have our own well. You will need 40 places to sleep uh, with to buy, to buy in some cots and some room to set them. So have blankets and pillows for them as well. You will need food for them with dried food and Marie's meals ready to eat or canned foods for about a year. And I'll multiply your food and fuels because of the, the our Lord being present and we believe in his miracles. You will need fuel for cooking. And if you are in the north, you may need kerosene, water, or propane. I say wood, sorry. Wood or propane for heating. You will need lights at night and possibly have solar panels and batteries for some electricity. You will need latrine means that flush toilets. That's what we have. Outhouses or leach beds. When people come to the refuge, you will need to know their skills so you can assign jobs. My angels will lead you to the nearest refuge with a flame, if you don't know where it is. The angels will shield you from the evil ones with an invisible shield. That's big. Even when you leave your house, you'll have that invisible shield and at the refuge. I'm sharing this for new people who are just, get, who are just starting refuges, like your new friend that just inherited a large plot of land. She is willing to have a refuge with her new property. Pray for her to help. This was because of her. Pray for her to help fix her roof leaks and finish her chapel. That was her problems. I love all of my refuge builders who want to help people during the tribulation time. I will warn people when to come to my refuges with my inner locution. That's only the people that are believing in God will receive this inner locution. And that's Catholics, non-Catholics. You know, yes, I'm sure yes. there'll be Jewish people. Yes, all probably. people who believe in God. Basically, yes. So that's pretty comprehensive. <laughs> now, when he said forty, he's going to send us five thousand. So. No, that's from jo <laughs> that's for jo Joseph. He's going to be providing us a big high rise. He said he could build it in one day, and also a big church to support them. Yeah. Also, so that's going to be a big building campaign. I, I think my neighbors are going to lose their property. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't know. I, I'm anxious to see how this is going to happen. But yeah, it's, it's be, I tell it's beyond my pay grade to know how to do all that. Well, I think your neighbors are pretty much on board with you, aren't they? Maybe oh, um, yeah, St. Joseph just kind of expanded all. Up. I didn't tell them about the 5,000, but they do notice with the outhouse. <laughs> yeah, out we there. have an outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Within half hour, I had four neighbors over. As long as I have. <laughs> what the... is that outhouse doing in your <laughs> property? <a> <laughs> yeah. no, they were, when we first brought it in, they looked, they, when I had Don build it, they saw this little half moon there. They, <laughs> they understood what that meant. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> at any rate, uh, I, they know a little. I just told them, be glad you're my neighbor. <laughs> That's right. Because you got the well for the water. So, But I, most it. of the people are, are pretty open. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway. So it's a big well, commitment. That's what yes, I was trying to I, explain. To stress with the, the, any people that are interested. And in, as I say, it's not too late, you know, if you get moving quickly. Uh because you know how quickly all the supplies went out of the store when the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. well, you know, didn't have it now. So mm -hmm. it's we didn't have to be panicked and run to the We've store. We've been preparing our refuge for about five years. So we've done a lot of this eight work. Year, eight years. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. okay, eight years now, I guess. Starting in 2015, we started. Yeah, and you do trial runs too, I think. Yes, so we did five mm -hmm. of them. Five trial runs. And matter of fact, the, the Lord recommended people that do have a refuge. It might be good to try a trial run with some, some of your friends just to see how things would work. Because you, you're, you're supposed to rely only on, you know, not your natural gas, not, you know, have your own. So we have different ways of providing the heat and the electricity and stuff like that with solar. Although the lady in California says, oh, we're going to do a drill. <laughs> 
Well, it turned out to be a live drill because with all the rain or solar didn't work. Yeah, just for so one night. It, it, yeah, so we're if you don't have enough, you know, it's clouds. You don't have enough light that, mm -hmm. that runs out. Yeah, yeah so. And then she, for how do you cook yeah. your food if you don't have gas yeah, well, or electricity? Well, we do have some she propane. Had, she had for that. That's how that kept and We're going to use the propane for making uh, loaves of bread. That's what, and that's shop, camp chef that we got three of them. So mm -hmm. those are different ways we prepared. Mm -hmm. so, um, you name okay. it, we've got a lot of these things covered, unless you want to talk about it specifically. <laughs> well, I, I don't know how much time we got left here, that's, but that's uh, what I meant. we wanted to uh, cover well, all the... Well, I, I get it. You're uh, Chef John and Chef Chef uh, Carol. Yeah. Carol. <laughs> but we have we have a, a real chef in our, in our prayer book uh, in our yeah, prayer group. Cuisine so. de Jean and Carol is great. <laughs> well, let me say, John. Bon appetit. A, even though he was a chemist, he didn't like he didn't cook food too much. But he's no. he's into the baking of the bread. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah every every five of those times that we did it, we made about four or five uh, loaves of bread. Yeah, yeah practice and, that. Yeah. I tried and, to do that a couple of times. Which means and it I came have 400 out like rock. pounds of flour downstairs ready for making bread. <laughs> what we need, uh, what I'm going to do it, uh, is put out some recipes on our website. Because oh, that's we've good. Got a, How to a make couple, the bread. We got a couple that, you know, you don't need to really good. rise it too much or a lot yeah. of it's simple, the simple and ones. So. You got to have sometimes the types of bread where you have the yeast and we don't have the yeast. So we, so you're able to make that's yeah. a really great idea and i'm glad you uh, m mentioned that carol uh yeah. and put that on the website because we'll frequently asked questions okay uh, maybe we can maybe we can do that today okay. what's what's the website let everyone know john my name that's a tough one j-o-h-n-l-e-a-r-y dot com. <laughs> com it's funny i i remember trying to um bake uh bread a couple times you know by scratch mm -hmm. and stuff like that and Boy, it's it came out like a piece of rock. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, we got a lot of work to do here. <laughs> you got to have a good recipe. And yeah, it's it good to have a good recipe. And as camp chef, you put it in the pan after you do all the rising and everything. You put it in there. It, it'll go up to about 425 for about 45 minutes. And it's done. Well, it, it's not the baking so much. It's the preparation. Yeah, the yeah. preparation. You got to yeah. right, knead it. And the yeast and all, that, and all that. He, he doesn't do the kneading. He just <laughs> likes to do the baking. <laughs> You're funny. Oh, yeah, that was can. Up. What was it called? Can chef? Camp chef. Camp chef. C -A -M -P. Oh, camp. Oh, cool. Chef. C-H-E-F. They use yeah. it for picnics and stuff like that. But uh, keep in mind, even with a solar, you're not going to have enough power to power an oven or to power ac right. so those kind of things uh, you gotta fill in for them mm -hmm. gotcha well it has two burners on top and yeah, then two, the oven it so runs on propane it's, it's a very yeah two, a couple two burners on dollars. top and an oven inside him yeah. i should probably tell him we want yeah you can make other things souffles <laughs> or you know different a souffle oh in. my gosh i'm gonna have some great food so everyone's going to be they camping don't out come, at. They don't want to at, come here. <laughs> that's what I mean. They're going to be camping at your place. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's let's move on with a, a couple other things. So okay. we 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 know that the COVID pandemic uh, is is over, but in the essence, it's not over with the element of control of what Absolutely. has been They're happening with COVID and the divisions. Now, families that didn't get the jab, there's apparently in the nuclear family unit may not have a division, but then maybe brothers, sisters, or other kids or who've moved out or what may have gotten the jab and there's divisions there. So let's talk about the COVID pandemic. I mean, was this a deliberate i know most of us think that this is something oh, yeah. planned but look go you know i i'm bringing it up yeah. just as a as an introduction message, you know? for you uh and is uh oh, talk man. about that deliberation of the pandemic plus talk about if there's another pandemic coming like yeah there's a couple okay. of things i want to say well okay. in the first must when you're talking about was there was it done on purpose absolutely yes it was done on purpose the whole purpose of all of these vaccines and Bill Gates and all the rest of these people, they want to reduce the population. That's the whole plan. So they give you bad vaccines, they give you bad viruses. It's all to reduce the population. That's number one. So you have to kind of 
after that. So this was a message he gave on May 9th, 2020. And I'm only gonna read the part of it that will talk about that. Then the Chinese purposely sent infected people to all corners of the earth to spread this virus. It is the plan of the devil and the elite to try and reduce the earth's population using the spread of this evil virus, even spreading it in your chemtrails. And if an even deadlier coronavirus will be spread in the fall, well, later on. So that, that's coming. So one of the things I just mentioned about the, the whole thing with COVID, the Lord gave us um, a message about how to help the people that were forced to take the COVID, you know, or keep your job. So a lot of people took it, obviously. So he gave a message that you can help. It's called the uh, Good, Friday. Good Friday oil. And the way you make the Good Friday oil, this was um, something we got from uh, a, a recipe that was given in Puerto Rico and also uh, a recipe the that Brother was given Andre. Brother Andre. Mm -hmm. Those were the, where this came from. And basically it was on Good Friday, you you take the some it's 3 oil. 3 a.m. You just have to stress the virgin olive oil. On Good Friday. You put it in a bowl and then you put a flame, like a little, you know, with a, Float a floating, floating flame in it. So while that's going on, then we say the 33. Uh, Hail Holy Queens. No, for, no, 33 Apostles' Creed, and yeah. then the seven, seven Hail, Hail Holy, Holy Queens. That's the prayers that you say while that's burning. So you've got us. Sometimes we had four four big bowls full of oil. And so we prayed over that and, and you pray an hour for that. And that, that's what's called the Good Friday oil. So he okay. told me that those that have that Good Friday oil, you could use that to bless the people that took the shots. And this would help reduce any uh, bad effects they have from the shot. Because a lot of people, I hate to say, they're starting to see a lot of people dying from my, myocardias. I mean, heart problems and all kinds of things that the spike protein is going throughout your body. It's mm -hmm. causing a lot of problems with different organs. So that's why he gave us that. I just want to mention that. So when you do that oil, John, yes. you know, you pour a little in yes. from a, a, a virgin oil. oil. Yes. You don't do the whole thing. Just pour a little in there and you could have oh, seven or eight. Whole, we, we did the whole bottle. bottle. We <laughs> pour the whole bottle. We did a, that's a what we did. punch bowl. Yeah, we did okay. A, a liter, of like liters. what? One virgin olive oil or seven or as many oh, as you we, want? We did, we we just, did pour about, just one. We did a few. Well, I mean, we did four bowls one time. Just oh, have gotcha. Because the people asked us for it. But then you, okay. uh, so then you leave the flame burning overnight, which we did. Sometimes it goes out, but don't worry. Uh, so we leave it going out. And then in the morning, I come in and just snuffed them out, took the little things out, and then re put them back in the bowl in the containers. And then you use it for praying with people. Okay. But uh, it can only be done on Good Friday at 3 right. a.m. or the Eastern <laughs> Rite. That's why I was saying it, so people could do it this, this year because right. mm -hmm. it's close now. It's on Good Friday, and also we did it uh, on the, in the Eastern Rite. The Eastern Good Rite. Friday. Good Friday is about a week later, so you got two opportunities to do it. He's ex yeah. The Lord accepts So 3 a.m. Yes. on the day of Good Friday, going yes. into the daytime. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, or the Eastern Rite. Going into Good Friday, because some people thought it was 3 a.m. on like the next day, Holy Saturday. Yeah, Holy no, Saturday. No, no. They were 3 a.m. on Friday. <laughs> yeah. On Friday. Um, and the and you where do you get the little wicks to put in the in the oil? Yeah, that's a little I just you tricky. Know, you get some burning, you know, uh, the little caps that you might get on tartar sauce or something. Yeah. You know, those little plastic caps uh, and then like you this. put a hole in it. And you just put a hole in a little piece of wick. And it's okay. a, a cotton wick. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, that's good that you said that so people know. Yeah, there's been several, uh -huh. several people. Don't worry uh, if the flame goes out earlier. There's okay. Been some, there's been some beautiful healings through that. Yes, we've oil. seen okay. people healed. Is yeah. that only for COVID jabs no, or is he, that for he other things? mentioned this for me. It was a, because a lot of people were forced to take this thing. Mm -hmm. and obviously, it's bad for them. Mm -hmm. So, it was to help them. With the effects of the shots but there's okay. other things people have been healed with other well yeah things. i mean you can heal yeah. other things but that was the per the real purpose yeah. was for the people that were forced to take the shot one okay. of the more one of the more dramatic ones uh this chinese lady in fact she sent us some of her origami she was so grateful her husband took the shot and he was i think within like a week or two he lost 40 pounds she, he was he couldn't walk she put him in a nursing home oh he was so gosh. bad and she blessed him with the oil and he started eating and everything. He was restored to health. 
Yeah, so it does you know, work. Wow. So it does okay. Work. I wouldn't say I don't every doubt, case, but, but I would say it does help people when you pray you know, over them with, with it. faith. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what what's next on the Black Plague? Yeah, the Black Plague. He gave a, a message on that on on February the twenty second. Um, I don't know. Oh, if let you me remember. ask you something. Hold yeah. on. Let me. So, are they going to still push this jab before we're going on Black Plague? Are they going to still keep pushing a jab on people? Yes. Oh yes, Probably. they'll have they'll have a they'll have another vaccine for the black plague, but don't take it because it's going to be just as bad or worse. Except antibiotics, uh, you know, uh, we'll have to look this up. But um, oh, for the black plague, for the, uh, the plague, uh, you know, if you get it immediately, but otherwise you're dead like in four days. Yeah, you so need you regular antibiotics, around. not not the mRNA. Don't take those. Those those kind of vaccines will kill you. Mm -hmm. But the, the regular vac, the regular uh, antibiotics, you know, penicillin and some of the other ones. I think a dioxy. I mean, there's a bunch of good antibiotics that they have that they dioxy. We need doxycycline. Us. Yeah, I think that I looked. I looked. I don't know. Up, all, but I didn't I'm not a medical doctor, so I don't know all that. But yeah, you there are a lot of medical doctors out there that maybe they can uh, shoot you an email and you can put it on the website or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, which ones would be good for it? Uh, for something of that nature. Uh, and, and you know what, when the COVID came out, there were a lot of doctors who rose to the to epitome of true humility and uh, for truth uh, and actually told us what we needed to take. Like some people take your cetins, zinc, vitamin D. Oh, yeah. Right. You yeah. Know, Ivermectin. Ivermectin and all the other ones. Yeah, well, that's treatment or, or yes, preventative. Treatment. Oh, you mean uh, the but, but I meant there was just supplement. even supplements to, yes. to right. you know, Which I take so every if day you didn't anyway. have it. <laughs> but I mean, th what I'm saying, there are doctors out there that we all know that are, are very knowledgeable and, yes. and uh, really, uh, um, you know, a uh, uh, epitome of of well uh, dr mccullough Lord. you know spoke in rochester last week yeah, and we just he, watched him and he said how uh just using nasal sprays with even yes. a little peroxide or baby shampoo <laughs> yeah. could have helped those people in the, beginning, in the very beginning in the very beginning yes mm -hmm. you know so that's a good thing to remember if even if you're coming down with a cold to use mm -hmm. yes. the nasal sprays mm -hmm. uh, to clear out the I know incubation uh, location. Getting okay. back to Navaj, go ahead. Big mm -hmm. here. Uh, I could see a lot of that. One of the things he gave me several times before, we didn't even call what it was. He was said there would be an you're gonna whenever you see dead bodies laying all over the ground, that's gonna be your sign to go to the refuge. He told me that back. A week. Oh, okay. Back. And there was blood coming from their nose and yes, mouth. Yes, that was. It's like we thought it was like the Marburg. Not Ebola. Those You're thinking black. That's, exactly. what we were thinking. that's why I was thought that. But, now he's but this was a supplied. new message. That's why I'm giving it to you. Uh, so I could see faces. Okay, I'll start. I could see a lot of dead bodies laid on cots in a church. I could see faces and the body. Let's see. I could see faces and the bodies were wrapped in black plastic. In other words, I couldn't see their face because they were all wrapped in black plastic because the disease they died from was highly contagious. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we know about this black plague is the thieves, the thieves, uh, in terms of the, what do you call it? Thieves oil. Those, um, essential, essential oils. oils that probably would be good for this also. Anyway, I asked the Lord what the black color meant of these bags. And he told me it was the black plague. Jesus said, my son, I'm showing you a difficult scene of many dead bodies wrapped in black plastic in a church. I told you that these people died from the black plague. This that was back in the Middle Ages. This disease is contagious and people could die within days if they did not get treated with antibiotics quickly. There could be bleeding from the nose. That's one of the symptoms. The disease, they have three kinds. There's a pneumonic plague, there's a bubonic plague, and another one with us. I can't remember the other one. There's three of them. So that's just one. Um, okay, where is it? Um, the spread. disease could be spread by rodents and fleas or person to person. Such an outbreak could also be spread from chemtrails in the sky. That's really dangerous. Evil people could spread this disease to reduce the population like they did before. I told you before, if you see a lot of dead bodies on the ground, you need to come to the safety of my refuges. At my refuges, you can look on the luminous cross in the sky. You call it the miracle, but that's what I saw. 
and you will be healed in faith. Give praise and thanks to me for all of the refuges I will provide for my faithful. I will provide your, for your food, water, and fuels at my refuges with miracles of multiplication for your survival. So, so if you don't have, if this warning hasn't uh, come or six, uh, where you have six weeks, I mean, if you see people right. dropping on the floor in front yes. of you, that's, that's a good time. signal to start Definitely. getting yeah. over to a refuge. That's a good sign for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it kind of makes you think that the warning would come first. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But to you give know, people we're never a chance positive. to be prepared. Right. Yes. I, and uh, can you talk about the Chinese balloons that we've seen? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, can you on say to that something? One. Yeah. Unless you are we done? Do you have something yeah, else you want okay. to say about the that's Black okay. Plague? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty much. much Gotcha. I mean, I could talk more about it, but it's good enough. I mean, I have about three or four more questions here. We will probably have mRNA vaccines for all of these, any other new disease they come out with, but don't take it because it will kill you. And just mm -hmm. a well, caveat eventually to that it wrecks your immune system. Yeah, but this on the, uh, what was interesting, I, we probably don't have it down here, but uh, a friend of ours went, worked at a military base, a naval base in Maryland, and She'd ask the guys when they came through, you know, are our ships protected from an EMP attack? Oh, oh. So it hey, turned out the one was Dr. Vincent Pry is the one she oh, yes. asked. And he had not done a real good research. So he did a study and he came back later and gave her the report, which she gave me a copy of. But in it, uh, they said that if there was a balloon lofted warhead at 30 kilometers burst height, it could shut down the they eastern- They exploded a bomb, in other words. Yeah, it sh could shut down the eastern uh, electric power grid, which supplies 75% of the whole country's electricity. Right. And they concluded that within one year, 90% of the people would die. Kind of starvation. Because, because they there don't would have be, any food stores. I mean, you could, nothing would work. Yeah, that's nothing. gonna be- yeah, that's going to be bad. And so uh, th this was a uh, pretty startling. And so when we saw about when it's about the balloons going over, I and then there in this report read about the balloon lofted warheads, I have to think yeah, it's pretty, this is a trial. pretty strong connection. I don't want to say make a pun trial balloon, but this, this <laughs> is, time. you know, this you was, have to wonder. This one message he gave on a Chinese balloon was on February the 4th of this year. Um, I could see a sign of a threat from China with the latest balloon spying or spying balloon, whatever. Jesus said, my people, you are seeing a sign of weakness when your military was ordered to hold off shooting down the Chinese spy balloon until it was over water. You also need to stop arming the, you know, this is another thing, arming the Ukraine and send arms to Taiwan, uh, who is in more danger from China. You are facing more threats from China than from Russia. Be thankful that this balloon did not send an EMP bomb that could destroy your electric grid. It is hard to prevent wars, but your military needs to be ready for attacks from both China and Russia. Pray for peace through strength. Be ready to come to the, my refuges if you see World War III coming. I will protect you and provide for your needs at my refuges. So it's really about being mm -hmm. aware of things. Yeah, so that it well, they shot. They had a, this was before they had the other four, the other balloons that came. I think another three they shot down after this. Mm -hmm. but anyway. Mm -hmm. But the point is, they well, that use balloon this. went a very long distance. Exactly. Really. But if that were carrying an EMP, a bomb that could be exploded over the country, mm -hmm. it would have shut down our grid. That, mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's, so this, this that's might, why I was saying that. Might might easily be how they're going to do it. They said it, the, in this report, it could even be just uh, sh shot from a submarine. Oh yeah, any number of ways, and it could come. It could come from China, Russia, or North Iran, Korea. North Korea. You pick a nation; they all have the bombs. Well, we know China's bought out so much of the land uh, across the uh, country, and and no one's really stopped them. That's um, true, too. That's another problem. Uh, especially near military installations. Mm -hmm. It's not. really something. Um, I, it's a big wake-up call. I don't know. Uh, you know, we, we definitely have the wokeness, the Antifa, the Black Lives Matter. We yeah, all all these other confusing things all happening so many people are just not uh no. paying attention oh we need to wake up here um right. what is really truly happening let's go on now and talk about okay. the one world uh religion, religion. 
Yeah, that's um, you know, that's how does this one. really affect our church? Um, yeah, what is the future of this church? I uh, I know we have we pray for our pope, uh, obviously. Right. We pray for all people. Yeah. Our Lord asks us to be loving people mm -hmm. of God. That's a true uh even in reparation that we give prayers to our Lord um yeah. for the death for our sins is kind of so I kind of think about uh Bishop Sheen. He always said all through history it's the faithful laity that have always saved the save church. The church. Absolutely. Not, not the hierarchy. <laughs> well, we're not gonna get too so much I, I don't want to say too much, but but we um, do know so, messages already of cardinals against bishops and bishops and, and, and like we the, know the right. schisms and things that we have that yeah. I know we're not supposed to dwell on that. We will pray mm -hmm. for them, but right. we still need to have some aspect, if you could, of messages our Lord is given right. as it so. is related to how this will affect our church and the and the future of our church. Well, the biggest thing seems to be uh, he's telling us a schism is coming and it's going to come over uh, when they change the words of consecration. It's a desolation. That'll be the abomination, the abomination of desolation. desolation. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, there's all these efforts to bringing about a one world religion. Yeah. So it's like the United Nations. This is what thing. we have to really be very watchful of. Because right. the Lord, I'll just read a part of it here. He says, um, about, I have established from time to time when I was at, okay, I'm warning you that a time is coming when there will be a split in my church. Some may call it a schism. You will see some leaders in my church try to be inclusive by joining all religions into a one world religion. Refuse to follow this new age one world religion because that will bring a new mass without the proper words of consecration over the host. This will be the abomination of desolation when I will not be present in a host without the proper words of consecration. You will eventually be called to the places of refuge where my faithful priests will use the proper words. I will be present there. So I think the thing too, he, he said that the future of the church was going to be the refuges. That's right. That's why the refuges are so important, you know, because the, the, the place faith will be people preserved. can go where you can get the mass because there won't be the, the if you don't have the good, the right mass. I mean, it's going to be pretty hard to find. So I guess to just tell have the people alerted about when they change the words of consecration. He also be, talked about that a, a there won't prison. be a valid Eucharist if the words right. of consecration. Exactly. And we know that the synod that we know that this is happening. Maybe you're not permitted to talk about that and say I can't. There that there is a movement uh, that is moving in that area for quote brotherhood uh, and no. changing. Now that I haven't seen that yet, but I know that in Germany there was a move for uh, people to be able to speak of of um, uh, and at the pulpit yeah, lady the german bishops have been pretty outspoken mm -hmm. so there's yeah. been some things happening happening there then but. there's this chrislam too you know yeah. that's, that's uh it's a new over and off the arab emirates where it's movement, a movement <clears throat> of the jews the muslims and the christians mm -hmm. yeah so it's also using the wrong see the big problem with one world religion is we have to stick to our original traditions Mm -hmm. And it can't be diluted by other religions. That's why it's so important not to take on any of these one world religions. Mm -hmm. And we do know that the Catholic Church will always survive. It will yes. be torn down big to remnant. big, big, small, maybe it's small, but it will start up again with the pure love of Jesus as a true church sure. continuing. Oh, the faithful remnant, that's what I call it. <laughs> yeah, All right. I mean, the, the, the Lord has, pro you know, has said this uh, over and over again. So, okay. Um, uh, let's see what else can we talk about. Um, uh, what do you think about World War Three? On to that one. Okay. Okay. Well, he's talked about in several messages. Again, um, we had one message: Is World War Three possible? This one message I had, I thought was very strong on July third. It's actually our, our wedding anniversary. <laughs> In 2022, we talked about it. I'll just read the pertinent part here. Okay. The war in the Ukraine is just the beginning of the takeover by the one world people and their great reset. There will be a world war. Now, he didn't say if, and, or, but. I mean, he said there will be. Wow. 
There will be a World War III and you will see Russia and China will be joined in fighting you even with nuclear weapons. You will soon see a limited nuclear war and several missiles will get through your defenses and they will take out your electric grid. He said, well, Father Michel had seven cities that would get taken out with missiles of atomic bomb. The evil ones will run to, okay, well, that's another problem. Do we know what seven cities those are? I he don't know. That was, that was Father Michel's. I didn't have that message. He just said a few, <laughs> a few cities of sin that I've had. Seven cities of sin. So I think we could guess most of them. Yeah. There's more than seven, but. <laughs> but then again, uh, we'll be at the refuge when this happens because okay. it's going to threaten a lot of lives, right? So whenever our lives are being threatened, he's taking us. He's going to call us to the refuge in the interlocution first before mm -hmm. these things happen. But he mentions how the evil ones will run to their uh, underground bunkers oh, yes. uh, also because uh, so they know this is coming too. And they're, they're, they're already planning it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. People have sent people have sent us pictures. It's one guy oh. it was of these truckers that went into this cave and i mean it's stocked with food yeah. just stocked. i know tractor trailer after it's for tractor, the elite trailer going definitely in. for the elite it's not for us mm -hmm. just and I, one. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I was going to say and we we do know that there was messages that if something happened <clears throat> with a nuclear event war that the guy would step in otherwise we well, for sure yeah, yeah he wouldn't allow massive killing of all the people he said sure. i wouldn't i won't let satan destroy my creation mm -hmm. sure. there mm -hmm. was one uh, sign of a red aurora borealis that was over uh europe and this was on february 28th i uh then i saw, I saw a red aurora borealis over europe as a sign of a possible war this is more of a possible thing uh during during lent you were called to prayer fasting uh i'll yeah, get down okay down. we're just down at the bottom here you saw a vision of a red sky over Europe from an aurora borealis, you know, you know the lights like they have in the north, northern mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which could be a sign of a coming war, just as my blessed mother told of a sign before World War II. You remember that? Mm -hmm. You have been given my messages of a possible World War III involving nuclear weapons. Pray for peace, especially in the Ukraine war. So I, on that day, February uh, 28th, uh, Europe and northern Canada saw it was very uh, much a red sky from the aurora borealis yeah. mm -hmm. and um, it looked like a that sign that was the sign you know she had before world war ii mm -hmm. remember the night lit with an, an unknown light that's mm -hmm. it so well i this we're about you know the, i'm going to ask one more question i think it'll be a good way to end um okay. for for us because we're about an hour out and you okay. know I know we've been I, talking a lot. <laughs> you know, I I hate to end it, but I don't want to lose the audience. You know, there's so much everybody can just take in. And yes, uh, so we want them to to be able to just do that um, okay. and not lose our audience. But uh, let, let's end with it. You know, sometimes I, I know when a lot of the viewers may see this, some are very excited for it to happen, but there are some that are going to despair. They get dis they really get discouraged yeah. and they get overwhelmed with so many um, things that they hear in the news and the media. Right. And <clears throat> why don't you speak to that of how, how to deal with uh, this and maintain peace? And well, uh, I think that would be a good way to, to okay. end because uh, okay. Yeah. you're you're a pro you're a giant in the world now and it's different when someone well, comes on and hears like anybody right? else <laughs> so yeah but we you. we encounter this uh situation a lot oh, when, I know. when we go out people become very anxious they don't want to hear my messages sometimes you know uh i guess people first of all i i say don't watch too much tv <laughs> and, you know, when you start, uh, if it bothers you that much over and over and over, it can get you really yeah. depressed, yes. you know, and to know the Lord has always told us in scripture, he will not leave us orphans. No. And so we have to put our trust in him. And he always says fear is useless right. and fear is from the evil one. Right. So if we get down, we have to pray a little harder, turn off the news because you know, quiet I, moments with Jesus. I, for sure. I get a little frustrated sometimes 
<laughs> and I told the priest. In Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I told the priest in confession, you know, I look at some of these people, politicians, oh, yeah, so and, you, know, you just want to kind of <laughs> have them removed, you know? <laughs> so he says, just pray to deliver us. Just say, Lord, deliver Don't us. Don't use from those them. other words. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think, I think maybe that's the idea to ask the Lord to deliver us from this evil, like in the, our father, deliver right. us from all sure. evil to uh, pray and trust. And, um, and maybe see what, what you can do, you know, like even now I got some phone numbers to call for my Congress people and things on, uh, the electric or you know the gas stoves you know i love my gas stove i don't want them to oh, take that's away. not going to go through no but what i'm saying is is sometimes you can do something proactive right to get involved yeah to get involved, I mean, yeah, to get get involved with, with the proactive mm -hmm. just don't do nothing just don't sit do there nothing. we are called right. for action works in, in faith i would say if you're doing these what you're talking about in this question I, th I think it, it really involves a need for a strong prayer and a faith in, in the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, people that have a strong prayer life, they're not bothered by all these things that are going on. It's the people that don't have a strong prayer life, I think, that are upset most by these things. And I think that's why, if anything, we need to encourage people to have a better prayer life mm -hmm. and put more trust in God. Mm -hmm. And especially with these refuges, this is his answer for us where we're going to go for protection. Mm -hmm. So it is important to let people know about refuges. And that's why I keep talking about it. But I think that the real important part is to have your, have your monthly confession. I mean, we're, we're right in the middle of Lent. This is the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so your prayer life should be, in other words, you should have your life centered around God, if I could say that. Because mm -hmm. that is really what gives you that strong faith. Mm -hmm. Without that, it's very difficult to you know, with all these mm -hmm. distractions going on, but that that's where we need to start first. And I think that's beautiful to, uh, to say, I mean, everyone, uh, there has a lot of emotions that, and many get angry and anger and emotion, but there's a point where anger can become a vice and a sure. real sin. And <clears throat> we have to be careful that when we go through this, that, uh, maybe there's a there's a justify anger as well but yeah. the, when we go through something of anger we have to remember to try not to allow do something that will allow somebody else to sin and yeah. <clears throat> to 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 love and to temper ourselves because we're human and yeah. we can be tempted we can get fear they can the and there are prayers confession. <laughs> yeah, there are prayers for protection from the archangels. And anxiety. And, That's right. Many people really have anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, I know people that pray a lot, but they still suffer from a lot of anxiety. Yeah. You know, right. so those are the ones I say don't watch so much news because <laughs> it, they're vulnerable because it makes you more distressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but keep your eyes on Jesus. That's my my solution yeah. for those people. Yeah. Well, thank you. There. Thank you, my dear friends. I, I, uh, it's an honor and, and pleasure, uh, oh. to be with you. You know that. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll be, uh, be in touch and we'll, we'll keep this going because, you know, little segments at a time, mm -hmm. a lot happens in a short period of time. So That's how we're here. We're, we got that little fishing line on you, you know, we're just going <laughs> to, well, and we love you very much. And, uh, um, and uh, we join you in, in prayer. And all of you out there, thank you for joining us at Totus Tuus Evangelization Network. And remember that God loves you and um, has a great plan for all of us. And we have to uh, be focused at peace, um, trust, and take baby steps. Remember how special and love you are. The little acts of reparation that Jesus suffered for us during Lent mm -hmm. was so much out of love for us. So we're going to, we're all going to be together. You know, we will never be apart from the Lord. So our refuge is in the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and we take the steps that we are needed to do um, to, uh, right, be part Amen. of this. Uh, family physically and spiritually <clears throat> thank you first right. love you guys um you thank you everybody god and god bless see you again soon thank okay. you <laughs> bye, bye guys stay warm mm -hmm. <laughs> bye